Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts. February, March 2020, paper 3 to question number 3. This is structure paper 3, which consists 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 3 is a part of section A, which deals with financial accounting. Now, without any further delay, let's get started. Ahmad and Omar were sole traders in the same trade. They decided to merge their business to form a partnership on 1st January 2020. The books of accounts of Ahmad and Omar had the following balances of assets and liabilities at 1st January 2020. Okay, then the following was also agreed. The values of each sole trader's business at 1st January 2020 were 400,000 and 300,000 for Ahmad and Omar respectively. Then the partnership would take over all the assets and liabilities of both businesses at the following values. All right. Now, for the first part of this question, we need to calculate the value of goodwill of each of Ahmed's and Omar's businesses. This is quite easy because we already have the value of each business, right? So these are the business value and we're also given the values at which all the assets and liabilities of both businesses are taken over. So these total will be the net assets value for both businesses, right? And in order to figure out the goodwill value, we just need to deduct our net assets value from the business value. Right, so we can start by preparing a statement in order to figure out the net assets value and the assets and liabilities to be included are plant and equipment, motor vehicles, inventories, cash and bank, trade receivables, trade payables and bank overdraft. Let's create it. And we need to create it for two different businesses, right? So one is for Ahmed and the other one is for Omar. Okay, and our very first asset was that of plant and equipment. We then had motor vehicles and inventories, cash at bank, trade receivables, trade payables, and finally bank overdraft. And then this will give our net assets value. Now we just need to substitute the values for each of these assets and liabilities from the above information. We can see that plant and equipment had the value of 230,000 for Emma, whereas 144,000 for Omar. Let's substitute these two values. So that's 230,000 for Emma, 144,000 for Omar. Now we repeat the same process for the remaining assets and liabilities. The second one is motor vehicles, 71,000 for Ahmed and 40,000 for Omar. So that's 71,000 and 40,000. Then we have inventories. And inventories has the value of 52,500 for Ahmed and 34,400 for Omar. So that's 52,500 and 34,400 then we have our cash at bank Ahmed has zero balance and Omar has 28,600 let's write it down so that's nothing and 28,600 then we have our trade receivables for Ahmed that's 58,000 for Omar that's 52,000 so 58,000 and 52,000 now we have our liabilities, trade payables and bank overdraft. And whenever we're trying to figure out the net assets value, we just need to deduct those liabilities from assets. So these two values will be recorded in a bracket, indicating that they need to be subtracted. For trade payables, we have the value of 42,500 for Ahmed and 34,100 for Omar. That's 42,500 in a bracket and 34,100 in a bracket. Okay, now the last one is bank overdraft. And for Ahmed, that's 8,900, and for Omar, that's zero. So 8,900 and nothing. Now we can easily figure out the net assets for Ahmed. That will be the sum of these values. That's 230,000 plus 71,000 plus 52,500 plus 58,000 minus 42,500 minus 8,900, which is also the value of 360,100. And for Omar, that will be the sum of these values. That's 144,000 plus 40,000 plus 34,400 plus 28,600 
plus 52,000 minus 34,100, which results in the value of 264,900. Okay, and we need to figure out the goodwill, which is just the difference between the net assets and business value, right? So I'm just going to write down the business value here. Let's have a look above. For Ahmed, that's 400,000, and for Omar, that's 300,000. Let's write it down. That's 400,000 and 300,000. So the good value is just going to be the difference between business value and net assets. In case of Emma, that's going to be 400,000 minus 360,100, which results in the value of 39,900. And for Omar, that's 300,000 minus 264,900, which results in the value of 35,100. All right, this concludes the first part of this question. We can now move towards the second one. We now need to prepare the statement of financial position of the partnership at 1st January 2020 if goodwill is included. Okay, so that is for the partnership of Ahmad and Omar. And we're preparing the statement of financial position. And this is at the date of 1st January 2020. All right, so we can definitely start with our assets section and in that we can start with the non-current assets. Okay, let's have a look above. We already included all of the assets and liabilities in the solution for our first part, so we can just refer this. Our non-current assets is going to be plant and equipment and motor vehicles. Let's write it down. That's plant and equipment. And motor vehicles okay for the values as well we can refer to the first part of this question because we have included the values at which they decided to open up the partnership right so the total for plant and equipment is just going to be 230,000 for Ahmad plus 144,000 for Omar which results in the value of 374,000 let's record this in our statement of financial position so that's 374,000. Now for motor vehicles, the total is 71,000 plus 40,000, which results in the value of 111,000. Let's write it down. And we were also told that we can include goodwill in our statement of financial position. And goodwill is definitely a non current asset. So I'm just going to write it down. For goodwill, we have the total of 39,900 plus 35,100, which results in the value of 75,000. Let's write it down. And this gives the total for our non-current assets. That will be the sum of these three values, 374,000 plus 111,000 plus 75,000, which results in 560,000. Now we can move towards the current assets section. Let's have a look above. So the current assets are going to be inventories, cash at bank, and trade receivables. Let's write it down. Inventories, cash at bank, and trade receivables. Okay, we can calculate the values as well. For inventories, that's 52,500 plus 34,400, which results in the value of 86,900. Let's write it down. That's 86,900. And for cash at bank, okay, cash at bank can be quite tricky because we also need to adjust our bank overdraft, which is the negative cash at bank, right? So the total cash at bank is going to be minus 8,900 plus 28,600, which results in the value of 19,700. This is the value to be recorded in our statement of financial position. And the last one we have is our trade receivables. For trade receivables, that will be the total of 58,000 plus 52,000, which results in the value of 110,000. Let's record this. Now we can easily figure out the total for current assets. 
that will be the sum of these three values 86,900 plus 19,700 plus 110,000 which results in the value of 216,600. Now we can also figure out the value for total assets and total assets is just the sum of non-current assets and current assets. In this case that's 560,000 plus 216,600 which results in 776,600. Now we can move towards the capital section. So for capital that is going to be present for the two partners, Ahmed and Omar. And in this case, we know that Ahmed and Omar previously were sole traders. So when they formed a partnership, their capital investment was their individual businesses, right? Which means that their capital account will consist of their individual businesses value, which again is recorded above right here. So the business value for Ahmed is 400,000. That will be his capital account balance. And for Omar, that's 300,000. Let's record this. That's 400,000 and 300,000. And this gives the total capital account balance to be 400,000 plus 300,000, which is 700,000. And we already had a look at our assets and liabilities and we could see no non-current liabilities, which means that we can move towards the current liability section now. Let's have a look above. And the current liability section is going to include trade payables because we have already included our bank overdraft in the cash at bank, so it no longer exists. Right? And let's figure out the total for trade payables. That's going to be the sum of 42,500 and 34,100, which results in the value of 76,600. Let's record this. That's the trade payables. with a value of 76,600. And this concludes all of our capital and liabilities section. So we can now figure out the total capital and liabilities. So that is just the sum of capital account and current liabilities, which in this case is 700,000 plus 76,600, which results in 776,600. And here we can see that the total assets value is of 776,600 and so is the case for total capital and liabilities, which means that our statement of financial position is correct. And this concludes our second part of this question. Now we can move towards the third one. We are given additional information. The profit and loss sharing ratio between Ahmed and Omar is 3 to 2. So out of the total of 5 parts, 3 parts belongs to Ahmed and 2 parts belongs to Omar. Now both partners also agreed that goodwill would not be maintained in the books of accounts. Now we need to calculate the capital account balance of each partner after goodwill is eliminated. Okay, as we can see above, we have the original capital account balance which includes the goodwill and we also know that the total for goodwill is 75,000. So we just need to deduct their share of goodwill from the existing capital account balances in order to figure out their revised capital account balances, right? So for Ahmed, we can start with his existing balance which is of 400,000, right? And we need to deduct his share of capital. We know that the total capital is 75,000. And now the share of goodwill is based on their profit sharing ratio, which means that three out of five parts belongs to Ahmed. So that's times three by five, which gives his new capital account balance to be 400,000 minus 75,000 times three by five, which results in 355,000. Now we repeat the same process for Omar. Let's start with his existing capital account balance, which is 300,000. So that will be 300,000 minus our goodwill of 75,000 and only two out of five parts belongs to him. So that's times two by five, which is us in his new capital account balance to be 270,000. This concludes the third part of this question. We can now move towards the fourth one. We now need to explain the meaning of the term goodwill. So goodwill is basically an intangible asset because it cannot be seen, right? Let's write it down. Goodwill is an intangible asset and this asset occurs only in case of acquisition of a business or change in partnership, which usually occurs in acquisition of business or change in partnership
and we already calculated goodwill above by subtracting the net assets value from the business's value which means that goodwill is basically an excess of a business's value over its total net assets value let's write it down it is an excess of a business's value over its total net assets value all right this concludes the fourth part of this question we can now move towards the fifth one we need to explain why the goodwill account is not maintained in the books of the partnership by supporting our answer by referencing to the accounting concepts okay so the very first concept could be money measurement because this states that the goodwill is recorded as an asset as a result of the acquisition of a business like we said before right where the purchase consideration is quantifiable in monetary terms but we are talking about a merger and in merger there is no purchase consideration because no parties are purchasing any new businesses let's write it down money measurement it states that goodwill is recorded as an asset as a result of the acquisition of a business but not a merger uh, where the purchase consideration is quantifiable in monetary terms so we have monetary terms right this just means that when we are acquiring any other business we would have to pay an amount called the purchase consideration and that amount would also be including the amount of goodwill which basically means that we are purchasing the goodwill as well due to which reason we could maintain our goodwill in the books of accounts but we're talking about a merger in which no parties are paying any amount to purchase the goodwill so the goodwill is not really quantifiable and this is under the money measurement concept now the next concept would be prudence because prudence concept states that the value of an asset should not be overstated and we're talking about goodwill which is definitely an asset and if we were to include the goodwill in our books of accounts of the partnership then it would definitely inflate the value of assets which could go against the prudence concept let's write it down value of asset is not overstated okay this concludes the fifth part of this question we can now move towards the sixth one we are given additional information the partners plan to purchase additional equipment costing eighty thousand. they are considering making loans to the partnership or applying for a bank loan now we need to state one advantage and one disadvantage to the partnership of each option First, we will be talking about making loans to partnership. So this basically means that the partners would give loan to the partnership business. And if we do so, then time as well as cost would be saved. Because if we were to apply for a bank loan, then we would have to go to the bank and fill out the application and apply for a whole process. Right. But if you're talking to a partner, then they could easily agree or disagree. So that's a very short process as well as our cost is saved. Let's write it down. Time and cost will be saved now we also have to state one disadvantage so the disadvantage could be that the partners might not have enough funds due to which we would have to resort to applying a bank loan let's write it down partners may not have enough funds okay now we need to write down the advantages and disadvantages for applying for a bank loan so if we are to apply for a bank loan then the major advantage could be that we would be able to raise more money right so may be able to raise more money 
now we also need to state one disadvantage and the disadvantage could be that loan interest might be higher or collateral may be required right so i would go with collateral one collateral may be required okay this concludes the sixth part of this question as well as the entire question if you found this video useful make sure you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you